Oh, oh motherfucker, you can't have my cornbread. That's for damn sure. Because if you try to take my cornbread, part two of my killing spree gonna begin up in here on your ass right now. Right. If you think about my cornbread, right. begin to taste out your mouth. That's for damn sure. Now, fuck him. Fuck this. Because I'm from New York City, goddammit. Nobody take no cornbread from me. And that goes for you and any other you motherfucking farmers gonna try some shit. You fuck around with me, it's gonna be consequences and repercussions. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Welcome to the Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast on Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast.com. I am your host, Maestro Styles, the homie Trey Frazier. We in the building. Uh, we appreciate you uh, joining the show. Uh, anybody who's going to join in live in the chat room and anybody who's going to listen on demand. Uh, real quick, uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram at BobShopSportsTalkPodcast.com. You can follow me, Maestro Styles, at Maestro Styles and Trey at Trey Frazier. On Twitter, you can follow me at Maestro Styles. You can follow Trey at BobShopSpor2. Make sure you like the Facebook page and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube page. Uh, Trey, what's good, man? Hey, my G, I'm good, man. What's going on? Ain't too much. Ain't too much. This week, uh, this week, y'all, we going we going to mix it up. Uh, rare, rare that we have guests, but uh, we have here Jelani Brown from the uh, What the Game Means to Me podcast. If I got that correct, I hope I got that correct. Jelani, what's going on? Yes, sir. You got it right. And uh, nothing much, fellas. What's going on with you guys? How you, uh, how's your day, man? Uh, cool, man. Uh, we we. Uh, I know. Well, I, I speak for myself, man. Uh, Tuesday is I, I, I try don't talk a whole bunch of sports during the week. I save it up for tr- I save it up for the podcast. So um, <laughs> I got a little I got a little bit of shit to talk. Uh, I know Trey got a little bit of shit to talk, and and, and hopefully you you a shit talker because we 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 shoot the shit here. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, I was like I can I try my best, but you know I think I can hang my hang with the best of them. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Jelani, man, uh, uh, first off, you know, before we get into it, man, I just want to thank you for having me on your show last week as an AFC North panel. It was pretty cool, you know, Mm kind of going back and forth with the guys about their teams and all that stuff. And I thought it'd be best to kind of have you on our platform um, to discuss some of the things going on with you, your podcast and some of your sports teams. So just to kind of jump it off. Uh, what the game means to me, a sports podcast by Jelani Brown. Tell us about the inspiration behind the name of the podcast and why you started getting in the game of podcasting. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm pretty new. Uh, I just started, well, it's coming up, I guess, on three months. I dropped my first episode like May 7th. Um, but I've been thinking about, yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. I've been thinking about starting a podcast for about a year before that. Um, actually graduated um, Georgia State last year. And Congrats. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you with a sports administration degree. So um, pretty much uh, the months leading up to that, like uh, I was kind of thinking like, well, kind of, you know, next steps, maybe things I maybe wanted to do. Uh, one of the things is maybe go to graduate school because I feel like with my undergrad program, it was a little new. So they didn't offer like the best, I guess, ways to get kind of into my to my field like I would like. So I kind of just, you know, thought about maybe pursuing my own path and do something for myself. So that's kind of why I wanted to start a podcast. But then again, like I said, it took like a whole year for me to even start it. Um, and right, so right. I just then started p- pondering on the name and things, kind of like what I wanted for myself. And I guess where the, the inspiration came from was, to me, I've been around sports in my entire life. And I know, you know, you guys might, you know, same same thing for you guys and others as well. I mean, I know sports has a lot of um, you know, impact on a you know, person's life in general, whether you continue to play on, you know, you know pro sports or you know whether you stop in high school so 
um, kind of the inspiration of you know, what the game means to me. Kind of, I just said it to myself one day. It kind of rang because, um, mm-hmm. like I said, I feel you know sports are inspiration as a whole, um, and we've seen that you know countless of times you know throughout the years. Um, so I figured I would you know have guests on the. I guess my first thought in starting it was I'd have guests on, have them kind of talk about their sports experience, kind of why um, you know what how they put like sports that they play. You know when they were little how it um, impacted them growing up, kind of how it's impacted their career field, the career choice, um, stuff like that. So thought in my you know, beginning, thought I had, you know, players on, coaches on that I knew, um, and then even sports industry professionals because I uh, kind of wanted their insight as well on how they got into the sports industry because anybody in the sports industry knows it's really hard to kind of get your foot in the door. Mm-hmm. So I kind of thought, like, maybe I can have those kind of people on my podcast, maybe not to only, you know, give me some type of inspiration or help, but others as well. Um, that might be coming up one to be in the sports industry. So that's not my first few, that's my first few thoughts. And I mean, I'm still kind of continuing with that as well. Um, but as I was going my first few episodes, I was like, I don't want to just make it strictly like interview based or whatever. So I was like, I can still do a lot with this, even though, you know, it says call what the game means to me. So I definitely wanted to, you know, pick different avenues. I wanted to, um, try to make it fun and make it, you know, laughable things that, you know, can get the pot stirring, which kind of like what my inspiration for um, the, the Smack Talks came from. And like you uh, alluded to, appreciate you, uh, Trey, for coming on. And then also, uh, no Maestro, yeah, the Maestro, I know you were in the comments a lot, um, you know, going at it with your guy, Trey, yeah. but also, you know, uh, you know, but you end up with the Steelers guy as well. But yeah, that's kind of um, so what the inspiration for it all came from. I'm still kind of figuring things out, um, figuring out different avenues to, you know, make it a great not only sports podcast but you know it's overall um podcast in general so um but i'll talk a little bit i guess a little bit about the smack talk um i know the results came in today so i gotta check i didn't even check i just know i got the notification so i gotta see who won i know it was really close between you and the guys um earlier in the week so hopefully you hopefully you pulled it out now jelani that was the nfc east right we were kind of in battle with the nfc east right because we had like 500 plus views and they had like oh yeah a little bit north yeah of no y'all right? y'all definitely yeah um you smashed y'all, them, right? I, yeah 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 y'all, y'all definitely surpassed them within you know that next day uh when we were looking yeah y'all surpassed them. like we had a lot of interaction with with uh you guys this episode which um I, like I told you guys, it's probably one of my favorites as well because it was a, definitely a good mix of between banter and smack talk, but also you know you guys are real knowledgeable about the teams, and then you also were um, realistic <laughs> as well. So um, right. and then also let each other talk. So I got them. So I definitely appreciate that. Um, and for those you know that's listening, definitely go check that out um, with Trey and uh, Travis and Tim, all those guys on the uh, AFC North Smack Talk Smackdown, but you know also the other ones as well. So. So who's um, like the I said, guy? Who's the Pittsburgh Steelers guy? The Pittsburgh Steelers guy was Travis. Um, I'm gonna say you guys probably probably come pretty good friends. Like you guys were saying, like you liked each other in the comments and uh, live on the show. Yeah, he got a man. He got a man crush over. Yeah, uh, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. That, no, that's where it stops. But <laughs> but nah, nah. He he knew what he was talking about. And low key. Um, he was jab body in my man's on in there. I ain't even gonna hold it. I ain't even gonna hold it. He was jab body in my man's. Yeah, no, they definitely was going at it. They they had but both both I was I was still with Trey. Trey definitely had some great some great points to throw back at him. Um, you know, especially about the Lamar Jackson point. Um, their defense, both the defenses points. Um, of both teams and um, honestly, just overall, like I said. So hopefully, Trey, I gotta check the Twitter poll. Like I said, it was pretty close throughout the weeks. So uh. I'll see if you pulled it out, and I'll let you know a little later. Okay. Um, hey, hey, listen, man, that's what happens. That's what happens when your team is in the best division in football. We get all the views, <laughs> man. Yeah. That's, that's how it goes down. That's how it yeah, goes down. Exactly. Yeah, because I, I got I got to check to see what the views are, too, but I'm sure that's upwards of maybe 600 at least now. Um, hopefully climbing up towards the 700 mark. But nice. Yeah, it definitely was a great episode. Like I say, everyone's listening. Y'all definitely go check it out and check your guy Trey out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Maestro. Hey, well, look, man. Uh, I, I, ho- I hope, like I said, I hope you got your, hope you got your opinions ready. Yeah, yeah, you know, because we, we gonna go straight in, man. Uh, Trey, if you ain't got nothing else, we, we can go straight in, my brother. Well, I, I, I asked the first question, so that's why I was gonna throw it back at you. Okay. Your question is. So. All right, so let's go. Um, off rip. Um. Me and Trey are DMV natives. Uh, well, not natives. I'm a native. Uh, Trey's from New York, but he's been here long enough. <laughs> he's been here long enough. Um, 
where where I won't say we claim him, but he lives here, so that's that's good enough. Uh, the Washington <laughs> football team has aptly temporarily named themselves the Washington football team for the year, and um, I, I, I can't help. I, you know, we've been obviously we've been talking about this for the past two or three weeks, but um, I, I just got to reiterate um, that this is some of the most uh, pathetic, disgusting. Um, cheap, retarded, and I know we're not supposed to use that word. Um, this is some of the craziest, this is some of the wildest shit. Um, and you know what? The longer the fans don't flush this guy out of the system, however, the way they can, make him sell this team, y'all get what y'all deserve, Redskins fans. Y'all get what y'all deserve, because this is the type of, um, idiotic shit that y'all deal with um this 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 is this is too much trey this is too much for me man yeah and uh you know before i give my opinion i wanted to you know throw it to jelani to you know oh. kind of get his take on the uh official name or i guess the the, the temporary, temporary name, official you know, name <laughs> the temporary official name so jelani you know your thoughts about that yeah yeah so when i first saw it i tweeted i was like this seems pretty lazy <laughs> because you know, just the Washington football team. Like, it, it seemed like they were kind of hyping it up, you know, last, probably like, you know, two, three days, like, to where, like, of course, we knew they were scrapping the name, they were scrapping, you know, the branding and all of that. And it seemed like they had came up with something, you know, that was viable and everybody would, you know, like pretty much. You know, I've seen a lot of people, different different people, graphic designers were putting different things out, like, and different names as well. So, you know, like Red Tails um, mm-hmm. to, you know, memorialize Tuskegee Airmen, then, um, Red Hawks, Warriors, like they was putting out a lot of stuff and a lot of graphics as well that looked like like okay, cool, like they can um they can go in one of these directions and it was a bunch of them as well. So you know, I thought it was going to be one of those you know something, but to hear just you know the Washington football team kind of like everybody else, I was like whoa, like you know that's pretty lazy to you know have all this time, all this you know all these people in power to you know discuss it, discussing this and then come out with you know something so bland and bare. But um, then I also took a second and thought about it. I was like, well, you know, teams don't really, of course, they're not changing their name every 5, 10, 15 years. So it's like, I guess for them, um, trying to see you know, the positive side for them, I'm guessing they just decided to take this year since it's, you know, it's an unorthodox year as it is. You know, everything's not going to go as it normally has for the football season. Um, and everything's still kind of in question a little bit. You know, who knows how many games they'll even play. But I'm guessing for them, they just decided to take this time to, you know, rebrand and make it something that's going to last another hundred, you know, years so, you know, they don't have to change it um, so they can, you know, take their time and figure out something, you know, that works best, I guess, for the whole brand and for their whole team, the whole organization. Um, but again, like I said, I feel like they still had time, could have still did that instead of, you know, just coming out, you know, national, announcing the Washington you know, football team and then kind of rolling with that for the year. But, you know... It is above me, above my Craig grade. That's kind of I try to see both sides of things sometimes. But you know, like I said, my first gut reaction was it was kind of lazy. So uh, I can't buy that, Jelani, and 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 here's why. And <laughs> and me and Maestro, we we've been talking about it for a couple of weeks, like you said mm-hmm. earlier. There's a guy in Virginia, Northern Virginia, which is not far from us, mm-hmm. that purchased about 20 trademarks. I did of see what that. The potential, yeah. Right, of what the potential Washington football team could be. Mm-hmm. And Trey, not to I, cut you off, I heard a rumor that it's more than 25 trademarks, like way more than 25 mm-hmm. trademarks. Mm-hmm. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I do remember seeing that, yeah. You're doesn't right. surprise me one bit, but to kind of get to the point. So you're Dan Snyder, you've owned one of the top, franchises in terms of finances Mm -hmm. in all the sports you got all this money your franchise is valuable why can't y'all just meet up with the person who has the ownership of the trademarks Mm -hmm. y'all sit down y'all have a conversation negotiate how much it's gonna be to pull washington red tails from your ownership Why, why why is that why does that gotta be so hard is it because dan snyder has this huge ego where you know, nobody's going to, you know, tell me what to do. I'm the oh. owner. And da, 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 da. Well, guess what? FedEx told you what to do. Pepsi <laughs> told you what to do. All oh. these other companies Nike. told you what to do. Nike, oh. they, these companies told you what to do. So now we're at this point. This team needs a legitimate name. 
Mm-hmm. And you know, for you know, for me and Maestro, the Washington Red Tails is where it's at. Um, mm-hmm. Find yeah. a way to contact this dude, offer him the bag, so he can give you the trademark, and mm-hmm. let's go. Like, why, why why does this have to be so difficult? Um, what I, and what I'll add to it, Trey, is look, look, man, <laughs> like. Nike should pull their money. Nike should keep their Nike should continue mm-hmm. to keep their jerseys off out off mm-hmm. there, keep their merchandise Agreed. off off the website. Cuz what like like what, like what what do you think you're doing? We so we got to put Washington football with a Nike logo on it and say that <laughs> you, and, and and rep and we got to rep for nah, y'all y'all stuck with it. We sh- mm-hmm. they should they should until the cuz it don't take let's be clear. I get that it may be a little bit of a inconvenience and all that is we a month away from uh, preseason uh, and or not even really not even a month mm-hmm. away from preseason. And, you know, y'all would love to have jerseys before then. But here's the thing. And, and, and you spoke to a Jelani briefly. Mm-hmm. They had this, they had made this great press announcement about how we officially dropping the name and y'all mm-hmm. built up all this hoopla about. You know, what might it be with the, you know, the Warriors or the Red Wolves or the Red Tails, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And after, yeah. and after a week or maybe a little more than a week of building up this, then you officially dropping the name. We expecting in the next couple of days that you about to announce a new name for the Washington football team. And mm-hmm. what did you do? You left it just as. Like, you know who I blame <laughs> for this? I blame Max Kellerman for this. You know why I blame Max <laughs> Kellerman for this, Trey? I blame Max Kellerman for this because for for years, when when this story, the last time this story reared its ugly head, um, it was made clear by Max Kellerman that he was no longer uh, calling them the Redskins. And every day on first take, when they got to talk about the Redskins for whatever reason, he <laughs> mm-hmm. talked. He called them the Washington Football Team. I feel yeah. like Dan Snyder. Or the people in his circle said, you know what? This thing going to cost us no money right now, and it got a ring to it because everybody is already saying it. Let's mm-hmm. go ahead and kick kick this trademark, the guy who got the trademarks. And we got to figure out this nigga name, by the way, because uh, he's a <laughs> genius. Um, yep. The guy yeah. who they – let's kick him in the nuts real quick and call us the Washington football team so we ain't got to pay nobody right now. And then now I'm thinking, now you got me in my thinking. Yeah, I got my thinking cap on right now, Slim. Mm-hmm. So now you got me thinking, I feel like they have already talked to this dude. And this dude said, told them what he want for whatever name he that the Dan Snyder wanted. And Dan Snyder didn't like the price. And mm-hmm. because Dan Snyder didn't like the price, um, he decided, all right, well, we're going to do this. Washington football team, Nike's still going to release jerseys. We still going to get paid. And then uh, trademark guys, I'll call them for today, trademark guy realizes, oh, man, I did all this for nothing. And come, and he'll come down on the price. This guy's <laughs> name is Martin McCauley. Martin McCauley, name. don't you come down on that damn price. Wait it out. Because what's going to happen is, what's gonna happen is, is not only are the Redskins going to be trash this year, but they're going to be trash, and they're not even going to have a real nickname for their team. The fans yeah. will speak, and they will speak. And with that protest, along with the the fact that we even here in 2020 with this whole Redskins and whole there, and then with the fact that Dan Snyder running a nasty ass organization with people uh, <laughs> being sexually assaulted and harassed and all these types of things, um, mm-hmm. we can run Dan Snyder about it here. So hold on, hold on. Keep your price your price, and when we get a new owner, get your bag. Mark McCauley, you said? Uh, yeah, Martin McCauley. Martin McCauley. Name. Get your bag, my brother. Get your bag. Hold and on. Maestro, I, I agree with you, Maestro. He mm-hmm. should keep it at the price that whatever that price was. If he shouldn't back spoke. down from it. What's that? If, in fact, they spoke. And let's be clear. We're talking about a billion-dollar organization. They found Martin McCauley. They've spoken. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, I, sure. oh yeah. <laughs> I, I I agree with you. I, I totally agree with you there. Which which makes me more disgusted that they can't. And and Dan Snyder has every right to not accept the offer. I mean, that's what you do when you negotiate. When you don't like something, you back off the table. You guys come back 
talk something else and see what you know kind of new things can pop up in the negotiation. Yeah. But mm-hmm. as as Maestro referred to, there's a culture of Redskins fans, you know, of this football team. Um, the fans are gonna talk loud. They're gonna scream that hey, we don't like the football team as the name. We want something that's gonna be popping for the next, you know, forever. You know, mm-hmm. we talked about you know, the red tails. We know what the red tails represent, what that means in terms of the Tuskegee Airmen. Right. That's mm-hmm. dope that we can, you know, as a culture, um, pay homage to those group of men for what they did by naming this team the red tails. Mm-hmm. Um, the owner at some point is going to have to see that. And if he can't see that, then the fans, the I'm sponsors, the see. companies, they're going to make him see and you know about the it? way they made him see that the term Redskin was derogatory and they made their money talk. And you know why they're going to make them see? Because in the DMV area, there are just just as many Dallas Cowboy fans that are making fun of Redskins fans because <laughs> of their ignorant ass owner. <laughs> I, I've seen, and, and I haven't been far in this all this quarantine, but just in my immediate circle of life, all you, when, when that subject is brought up, all you hear is the Redskins, oh, excuse me, the football team is trash. <laughs> and y'all trash for not even having a nickname. So, like, they are literally going to be the laughing stock of the league this year. Uh, albeit how long we actually going to be playing football this season. Mm-hmm. Jelani, yeah. any thoughts? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I kind of I agree with both of you two on the, yeah, that, I was advocating for Red Tails to be the name of it. Um, I did remember, like I said, reading that story, seeing that story. And from what I know, or, you know, think I know <laughs> from, like, trademarks, um, depending on how long he bought it for, like, he can, like, I mean, I about to say, he could keep pushing this out longer, like, pretty much, like you said, he's going to hold his price, because I think he, I mean, the... He got the leverage. I think, yeah, as I was say, he got the leverage. The least amount I think he bought it for or is, like, at least five years, so it's like, he, he has it, he's owning it, he ain't going to come down on his price. Thing is, like you were saying, Trey, I think it is an ego thing for sure because, like, like Maestro also said, you know, he did what FedEx, you know, told him to do. He did what Nike told him to do is getting pressure from all these big, you know, five, Fortune 500 companies. It's like to him, it's like, who's this guy? Martin, I forgot his last name already, but like, Martin McCauley. Guy? Yeah, Martin McCauley. Yeah, like, who is this yeah. guy? Like, I'm not about to, you know, like, I guess, come, not coming out of this, but basically, you know, conform to what he wants because I need a name real quick. And Maestro said, he figured, like, all right, they're not going to spend, like, that that much money this year naming it something bland and boring. And then, like, I guess next year they'll come back to the table and have something ready. But thing is, to me, if I'm thinking, like, all right, he already got a whole bunch of the names that were, you know, prospect names. It's like, y'all giving people a whole nother year to think of anything else that they can possibly That's come up point. with. And start and start buying these trademarks as well. So it's like you really, you honestly, I don't know if we can cuss on this or not, but you all honestly effing yourself like more ahead, because man. okay, yeah, you all you honestly fucking yourself up even more because you know you're not you didn't you know have a bio plan and come up with a solution and come up with a name now. Like you're giving people a whole year to figure out what you possibly can come up with now and then continue to buy those trademarks. You're gonna be in the same boat and mm-hmm. that as it then then you're just you know. I guess bidding and seeing which one is going to be the less amount that you got to buy it for. But then, like, honestly, like my show was saying, you're just disappointing the fans even more. You're, you know, making yourself look like the laughing stock of the league. And, <clears throat> and you you're just, already you know, in hot water. Have, yeah. 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 Like, so I honestly think, you know, if he doesn't, he has to, like, honestly be perfect from here on. He has to play his cards, right? Or, you know, people are going to try to force him out of office because this, this sex ring, sex scandal stuff. Um, it's already serious in itself, so I can definitely see them, you know, trying to push them to sell the team. Um, not obviously not the same as uh, when Sterling had to sell it, but you know, just something of the sort, something of the yeah. nature. Yeah, yeah. Where's Viv Stiviano when you need him, man? This probably would have got <laughs> done a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah word. <laughs> word. I got one quick thought, and we can move on to the next subject. Mm-hmm. So. Keep in mind, the District of Columbia still can deal with this team in terms of building a new stadium at the site where the current RFK stadium is at, Maestro. Yeah. Um, what's holding that from happening is this whole thing with the name change. So now, you know, like Jelani said, you're pushing this back. 
even further. Now you're pushing this potential deal back even more. And, you know, by the time you get to year three, year four, whenever mm-hmm. you get this new name in place, it's going to cost more to build the stadium, you know, four years from now than it would be if you just found a new name now, then try to get a deal on the table maybe within a year, and maybe you could get it at the cost that, you know, is at least respectable. Now, mm-hmm. pushing this thing back, now this thing's going to cost a lot more money than, you know, we could ever imagine. So I, I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. Um, so to the next subject, um, and me and Jelani, we were discussing this before we got on. Uh, the biggest story of the week is the 14 people that tested positive for COVID-19 with the Miami Marlins. And as a result, the Marlins have to shut down operations for a week. Their players have to quarantine. I think it's 14 days 14 down days, in yeah. uh, Florida. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's affecting my Yankees in terms of the schedule. Now we got to play the Orioles, which I don't mind playing. Um, <laughs> we got to we got to we got to play the Orioles tomorrow and Thursday. Um, it's affecting the Phillies. I know that. I think the Phillies actually are going to shut down their operation yeah. until Friday. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think the Nationals are somewhat affected as well because yeah. I think the uh, Phillies play the Nationals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So now. So now Major League Baseball is in a situation now. Now they got to tinker with the schedule and you got to worry on top of the fact that there might be more players on other teams that test positive. Yeah. Um, I didn't bring I brought up the fact that uh, Juan Soto with the Nationals a week ago tested positive. So the Nationals are already compromised in terms of losing one of the best players, if not the best player mm-hmm. on the team. Mm-hmm. What's what's gonna be what's gonna be the threshold for baseball to just say you know what let let's just scrap the entire thing this whole thing you know not playing in a bubble and having teams travel to empty stadiums this whole thing isn't working like what's what's gonna be the threshold for them to just call it quits is there another place where like just hypothetically is there another place where they could bubble like the NBA is doing. Um, I don't know. And the whole idea about playing in Florida and Arizona a couple of months ago when they tried to put that proposal on the table, um, it didn't work because, number one, in Arizona, it's like 150 degrees, right. you know, hot outside. And so you, you can't have the players, you know, dying on the field because of, you know, them, you know, being dehydrated and stuff. Um, the same thing with Florida. It gets hot in Florida and you got open air stadiums. Um, that's not going to be suitable for them. So but I they don't, don't got a dome that, somewhere. I'm sure that, but that's 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 you can fix Bay that. Have one. Yeah, 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 like the Raves we, have one. The, the Marlins have one. Know, um, yeah. the Diamondbacks in Arizona have a dome. Um, I, I I guess I guess it's a little different because uh, with grass, I guess you got to maintain it more than you can maintain a basketball court. Mm-hmm. So I guess you got to think about the maintenance part to that. Maybe they yeah. don't want to put that much emphasis on that or much effort into it. So maybe that's why it wouldn't work for them. Yeah, but you either do that or shut down your goddamn uh, league for a season. <laughs> like, it, like, mm-hmm. see, I, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Like, it, and and I've been saying it. I've been saying it, and I've been saying it, Trey. Mm-hmm. It's not time for sports. I know. That, I mean, it, it's mm-hmm. the it's the threshold that drives our podcast, but each our individual podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I love watching sports and, and all those wonderful things, but it's just not time. Nothing has changed as far as percentages about who's you know uh, who's testing positive and who's not. Numbers haven't mm-hmm. made a drastic change. It's just not time. And, and I, you you want your money and people want their money, but at what cost? At what cost? People are dying from this. And we yeah. ain't going and we ain't going to uh take a hard reflection until somebody uh you know of LeBron James caliber, God forbid, passes away mm-hmm. until somebody got to take a, a hard look and like, look, hey man, we we shouldn't have did this. We like yeah. we we rushing this. They but that's they're unfortunate it. though. It's unfortunate that it would have to take a superstar of that caliber it don't even have to, be. to just say, hey, we're done. We're not doing this. God forbid, you know, you know God forbid, and you know, God forbid, like, a, I don't know, hell, I mean, you can name who you want to name. God forbid, a, 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 a Lou Williams, uh, you know, it don't have to be LeBron. It don't have to be LeBron stature. It could mm-hmm. just be a notable football player, um, right. you know, 
you know, Dak Prescott. I'm just I'm just saying random names. That it could be somebody. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Mm-hmm. You know who who uh, Zeke who tested positive. I, I, you know, I'm not sure if it's over. You know, if it's quarantine is over. I'm sure it's quarantine is over. I'm not sure how. I'm I'm sure everything's fine because we would have heard about it by now. Um, right. But. All that, yeah, like it could be anybody, and, and it's, it's going to take, God forbid, somebody like that passing. Is it going to have to come to that before we decide, hey, you know, this is too much? Like, this is too much. It's too much. Um, what you say? It was like yeah. all those people, um, it was, it's a, there's a number of people who caught it in the NBA, who had it in the NBA, they quarantined, and they appeared to be okay. Football players yep. are not playing football because of it. it it's, it's, too much going on. It's just too much going on. Yeah. Yeah. What you think, uh, Jelani? I, was, I also think it's a lot. The one thing I remember before we even got on, um, I got like a little Bleacher Report notification. I don't know if it was somebody in the Mets clubhouse or like a governor or a mayor somewhere in New York, but I do uh-huh. remember seeing someone saying that they was offering basically if they still needed a bubble for baseball that they would do it in New York or, you know, try to put together a plan or whatever to make it happen in New York. So that was just interesting. I just remember yeah. seeing that. So I thought I said that. I don't remember the guy's name, unfortunately. I know it's somewhere still on my Bleacher Report on my notifications. But uh, I do remember That would be a bad that. idea. Yeah, I think way. so. Was like, that's what I was saying, too. I was like, it definitely would be a bad idea because... The crime, you know, the crime, the crime back home is just mm-hmm. out of... It, it's, it's, too, it's too much right now. Yeah, that's you what know, I was about to say, yeah. The, exactly. the crime is crazy up there right now. yeah. And then, you know, it being it, it was being, you know, it was one of the hot spots, too. So it's like I just mm-hmm. thought it was a pretty bad idea as well. But I do remember, you know, seeing that. But I guess to you know, guys point about um, baseball one or like me and Trey were talking about before we got on. It's uh, the NBA just seems to like do like even though this might not still be the full, like, you know, full plan to do things right. Like it's working so far. But yeah. like, it just seems like the NBA always, I guess, is like out front on these type things and they know kind of like what to do. It's just like, they're like right. kind of like the go-to league to see what to do. And yeah. it, yeah. um, like with baseball, I think personally, I think it would have been pretty hard to make it, make a bubble type plan for baseball anyway, especially it being, it was a, you know, they hadn't started, started the season yet. It was just a lot of pressure on them to have a season. So mm-hmm. it's like, it's like they don't, for the NBA, it was like they could cut, cut it down to a certain amount of teams because we was close to playoff time. So, they invited, you know, you know, extra teams or whatever, just to right. see if they can possibly, you know, push that, uh, push to be in the playoff race. But you know, with baseball, it's like they literally hadn't started yet. It's like they they just started from scratch, and they they're just feeling so much pressure from all these angles to have a season. Period. You know, I feel like it was kind of rushed. They try to put something together, um, you know, come up with all these rules, guidelines, plans, and everything. And you know, the pretty much the biggest thing that they did was not having fans. But, you know, keeping everything in their own respective cities. But we see kind of like what comes of that, especially if everybody isn't, I guess, disciplined and able to do what they're supposed to do. Not saying like the Marlin players weren't disciplined. You know, who knows what happened? Like, see, this is an airborne disease. Like one person can get it. You're in the clubhouse with the whole team. You possibly spread it to the whole organization. And you so, don't even know you got it until. You got it, exactly. Yeah. Especially right. if you're asymptomatic, you, you don't even right. know if you got it. So, it, I mean, like I say, not to call them irresponsible or anything, but it's just like it, you're kind of playing with fire the way that they did it versus kind of how the NBA went about it. Um, like I said, you kind of see with the NBA, they, they're taking everything serious. They le- play a leads for, you know, family. Emergency, they come back, they still got they got quarantine for 10 days. Um, you know, with, the, with, with baseball, it's kind of like you said, they're playing in their own respective city. They're kind of doing like their own thing in a sense, you know, no fans or whatever. I'm sure they're still kind of doing similar guidelines, you know. But it's just like, you know, it's just it's just different. And like I said, like my show was saying, I've been saying kind of the same thing. It's really probably not time for sports to come back, you know, with the bubble idea, the bubble plan. I have been saying, I guess the blueprint for football is we'll see how baseball and basketball do. And we kind of see how basketball is doing. Like I said, it's not over yet. There's something can happen. Like so, like something can immediately happen. One person can get it. They're in the bubble. I was going to say, we really play. don't know. We really yeah. don't know if it's really going to work with basketball. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Ball right now. They haven't exactly. even really played yet. I mean, they've had some scrimmages here and there. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, you know, it's, and, and I, I want to touch on the Lou Williams thing in a minute. But, mm-hmm. you know, you got players that are going out the bubble for, you know, family reasons and yep. personal issues. Quote, Zion. quote, <laughs> quote. Sure, I believe he. I believe he had a funeral, but I also believe yeah. he went to Magic City to get some wings. I well, believe that. so how y'all feel about that? Um, I, I I think it's too much or nothing to be honest with you because yeah. uh, uh, let's 
let, let's let's be real. I'm I go to work every day. I'm back in the office. We got guidelines. We have rules, instructions, and things like that. We got to wear a mask if we walk around and mm -hmm. all that good stuff. I could still go to Wawa and get me a sandwich. I could still go <laughs> to the QT and get me a soda. You know what yeah. I mean? Like mm -hmm. Lou Lou Williams can't go to his favorite spot to get food. Yeah. I, I I feel like it's a big it's being made a big deal because it's Magic City. That, yeah, that's, that's why. Yeah, that's what I feel like. And and, and I don't. And I, this I, is a. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, John. You know, you oh, go, go I was ahead. Say, this, I was just gonna say I live in Atlanta. This is my area. This is you know mm -hmm. where I grow up at. I, like Lou Will went to school twenty minutes from where I live. So and he's kind of like you know not seen as a legend, but everybody knows kind of Lou Will here. Yeah. Um, so it was like if, knowing that you know Lou Will, that's his favorite. That's pretty much one of his favorite spots to go get food from. So, like, Trey is saying, I think they're making a lot of nothing because, you know, with him, I think it was kind of like an in and out. Like, everybody knows, like, everybody in this area or even people traveling know, like, Magic City's known for their food. Of course, you know, they have the name Magic City and everybody knows yep. it's a adult entertainment area. But yep. I personally haven't had it, but I've heard everybody rave, you know, about their food. So, I think, like Trey just said, they're making kind of like a lot of nothing. So, it's kind of like of saying to see like but we also know how the media is they'll turn ties and make stuff like this a story when it's really not much of a story but given the times i see why they're trying to push it and make it a story but um i, don't, I just don't like the one thing i know you probably guys about, about to talk about i don't know if you saw what kendrick perkins said about it yeah shut that shit up yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah tell perkins shut stuff. his ass up man yeah, yeah Perk, <laughs> i don't know man i don't know why they've been pushing perks comments a lot on uh on instagram but i was like yeah. like what like first of all and, and first of all before we get into that let me also stamp those wings because those wings are delicious i've had um <laughs> it, it was a while ago but I, I remember those wings being delicious in the midst of ass shaking in my face I, it was a, it was a great <laughs> it was a great couple of minutes i had while i was waiting to be picked up from the uh greyhound station um um, so, um, if, so let's be clear. Let's be clear on this and, and why Kendrick Perkins is, is job launching. And, 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 and don't, 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 like, Zion Williamson has to be responsible, so why can't you? Let's be clear. When you leave the bubble, regardless of what you do when you leave the bubble, guess what you're going to have to do? Quarantine. So why the hell yeah. can't you go get no damn chicken? <laughs> I bet you a thousand bucks Zion Williamson stopped to get some food somewhere. <laughs> to his favorite right. spot, just wasn't I Magic City. That. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I didn't like it, Kendrick Perkins. Um, and, and to be honest, I'm, I'm normally he normally I kind of like respect his opinion. Normally, yeah, he, 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 he tripping on this front because that's like yeah, he been he been tripping on a lot of stuff lately. Yeah, that's what I say. He's one of those guys <laughs> on his pen now. It's like I, like I remember one time they had him talking about like football like analytics. I know they try to have everybody be you know work like you know well-rounded yeah you know, talk different sports yeah. or whatever but i'm just like yeah. i'm not asking kendrick perkins about his college football opinion ever yeah. so it's like it's i don't know with him it's like sometimes i kind of agree and sometimes i'm just like man he's he just needs to kind of you know shut up but that's a lot of different analysts in my opinion so yeah that that's true that's, <laughs> that's true that's true, that's true. And, and i do to like get... the clap back who williams though did oh, you know what yeah, he yeah. said uh, I clap back from lou I, I do like that though. Where I, saying, I didn't hear what he don't said. Don't just come around me and say that I'm doing it for TV. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I, I like what he said there. Yeah, and then Kendrick just tried to you know push it off. He tried to call him like pick on his size. How big people be doing sometimes? And just like yeah. like you can't hang with me, little fella. Hashtag little fella. I'm like you need you're not even you know responding to what he said. You just talking about his size now. Like it's like in a way he little boy you so. Yeah, he, oh, no. yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah, I, I ain't like that. I, I didn't, like it. I didn't like it. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, he, he, yeah, he missed me with that. Um, let's get into some. Let's get into some good news, man. Let's get into some good news. Uh, and this won't take long. First and foremost, or not first and foremost, but first on the docket. Uh, let me say congratulations to Russell Wilson and Sierra. They just had a baby. Um, oh, get that out the way. Uh, yeah. Mookie Betts. Of uh, the Dodgers just signed a 12 year, $365 million contract. Um, I leave Damn that. right. Yeah, Damn get right. your money, black man. Get yep. your money. If you ain't got nothing to add to that, I, could, I can continue with the good news. Um, yep, go ahead, man. 
Pa- Patrick Mahomes, this motherfucking legend. He he's becoming a legend too fast. Like I I need him to like do something wrong because he's he's doing too much. Like he's these these like damn near perfect. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is officially a part owner of the Kansas City Royals. Makes sense. He can afford it now. Congratulations, uh, Black Excellence and Black Wealth. Um, I love that. Um, and then, um. I got Man. something to say to that though. Go ahead. I ho- I I hope I hope that this is a trend because you're already seeing with the sale and you know Jelani, you're a Mets fan, so mm-hmm. you already know how many folks have been in on the bid for the team. Yeah. Bradley Beal, Travis Kelsey, just to name a few guys. Brian Erlacher, I think you know, put some money in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope this becomes a trend where not just former players but current players who got the bag can mm-hmm. participate in, you know, shares or ownerships of these franchises. I had no idea the Kansas City Royals was even, you know, a por- or a portion of it was for sale or yeah. maybe some minority owner of the team decided I don't want my shares no more. Let me give it to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I certainly had no idea about that. And you don't got to be on the market. Forward. <laughs> it, yeah, that's true. That's true. And, and I, I just hope this is a trend, though. I hope that and if somebody from the Washington football team is come listening, on, <laughs> you know, come, on, come on, get Snyder up out of there. We gonna have you know, you know what we do, man. We gotta we gotta come up with a a, 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 a wish list of people to, to invest in that team, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. We well, we talked up. about it. We talked about it. We said John Wall got some bread. Yeah. Uh, we don't know what Wale's pockets is looking like, but, but hey, I man, would put one percent in there. If you got one percent. If you got one percent, right, put one percent right. up in there. Mm-hmm. There you go. I'd I'd like to see somebody like Regina Hall and Taraji P Henson maybe make a, a, a an investment in a share of the Washington football team since they're mm-hmm. DC natives. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see something like that popping off, and and really everywhere else in the country. If you know there's a portion of the team that's for sale, I like to get you know some black, black people, people involved in some business yeah, and all that. Exactly. Sir, I mean, even a few years ago, uh, I know it was with the Carolina Panthers, but you know Diddy. Jay Z and all them, we're talking about possibly, you know, getting mm-hmm, to the yeah. good old boys. Plus, so it's like I know they're not DC natives, but like you kind of just said, maybe coming up with the like kind of like what they're doing with the Mets, like a, a bunch of former or current athletes, you know, kind of putting like a putting a group together, you know, and making a bid, you know, have a specific share. So it's like if a you know a community of black, you know, people with wealth um, are able to do that, I definitely would love to see that. Like I said, I know maybe not, maybe not be their hometown team, but it's, you know, definitely a foot in the door and ownership of a team that isn't, you know, in a, in a black area, honestly, um, being, you know, in, in DC area. So like you said, mm-hmm. something I would love to see as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and finally, um, this is good news to me. I don't care what y'all think. This is good news to me. <laughs> uh, Mike Tyson is going to fight Roy Jones Jr. in the Legend, and, uh, and this is supposed to be promoting some new thing called like the Legends League. I'm not totally privy mm-hmm. to exactly what this is and what's going on. I heard Mike Tyson talking about wouldn't you like to see Allen Iverson play one on one against uh, whoever else he named, and we're going to try mm-hmm. to facilitate that here. And you know, mm-hmm. um, look, here's the thing. Uh, speaking specifically to Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. I get it. They're old. Um, it's not going to be the same fervor and uh, uh, bounce and stamina of, you know, them and their primes. But I'm here for it, man. I, I look at Mike Tyson train. It don't look like it used to, but it still look good. Roy Jones still look all right. Um, and like Mike Tyson said, Mike Tyson is probably still one of the most popular boxers ever, and he hasn't boxed in over 20, 25 years. So, um, almost 20 years. I think his last fight was like in 2003, Loki, and I didn't know that until I read something. But um, he's still one Hmm. of the more popular boxers now, and he hasn't boxed for almost 20 years. Uh, Floyd Mayweather hasn't boxed in Lord knows how long. People are still talking about him like he's – like one of the guys, I get Deontay Wilder um, is obviously the 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 new guy now, but um, mm. Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. 
I'm for it. I'm here. I'm mm-hmm. here for it. And I know we spoke briefly about it last week, but I just wanted to reiterate because I um they have started to release more information, specifically the Legends League. Um, mm-hmm. I'm still here for it. I will watch it. Um, am I going to pay for it? No, but I'll watch it. <laughs> um, and I, and I'm here for it, man. This this is good news to me. I can't wait for September the 12th. I am going to uh, line up my my vegan chicken wings and. And I'm going to do the damn thing. I'm going to watch it. I'm, it's going to be a sporting <laughs> event. I'm here for it. Nate, I, I don't know what's going to happen of the undercard of Nate Robinson and, and, and Jake Paul. Um, who has uh, who who is a fighter, to my understanding, but made more money in YouTubing. Um, mm-hmm. And, and whatever, whoever, whatever special music performances you have, I'm here. But... I'm going to watch it. I'm going to lay it out. It's going to be just another moment in black excellence because this is a Mike Tyson league. I'm here for it. So while you were talking, Maestro, I I just came up with this thought. This is basically kind of like what the big three has done, you know, bringing back, you know, some of the old legends to the basketball court and, you know, kind of watching them play. And even you see some older players, former players, um, coaching these teams in the big three. This is what I compare this to, uh, Roy Jones Jr. and uh, Mike Tyson. This is all for nostalgia purposes. Thanks. It's it's all for the purpose of those guys generating, you know, millions of dollars for whether it be a charity or just generating dollars just, you know, just to get the bag. Charity um, with a quotation mark. I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah, cool. I'm, I'm here for it. I, I, I got no issues against um, those guys, you know, getting into the ring again. Um, I don't think, and, and if both guys are smart, which I think they are, um, they won't put as much energy into it as they're, you know, in their 50s. Nah, um, nah, I'm with they, you. They won't, they, they won't put as much, they won't put as much, you think they're going to put a I lot want of energy them to it? put the energy, I want the energy. I want it. I, I don't care I, how I, stupid it looks. I don't care how old it looks. I want I the energy. Wanna see, I want to be a fight. I don't want to see niggas die in the ring, man. <laughs> no, I, I don't want to see that. Nobody <laughs> does, but let's be clear. You risk that. Every boxer risks that every time they step into the ring. These are I dogs. If you've ever heard, man, I've, I've watched Mike Tyson on his podcast cry about letting this, this, uh, this, guy out let you know the the boxer he was the guy who he became as a boxer he's been crying because he want to be that person he want to knock a motherfucker out all that crying (laughs) and all that energy i see on his podcast and every time i watch on his podcast i see him allude to this this uh alter ego so to speak that Mm -hmm. um that he that he's been fighting since he's hasn't been a boxer i want to see that dude come out for eight rounds i want to see it I hope Roy Jones is prepared for it because he was a dog in his day, too. I'm here for it. Box. Fight. Now, I don't want nobody to die, neither. But I damn sure don't want to be shorted of entertainment uh, for niggas going half, half step. I want to <laughs> see a fight. I don't want to oh, see Oh, Roy anything. Jones Jr. is the definition of entertainment now. Yeah. Oh. I think you're going to get that for certain. Well, I, he got to go. He can't go half ass and entertain me cause I, because let's be clear. They're 50. So them going half ass at fifty looks stupid. It does. It will. It's going to look stupid. At the, it, it, it might will. look. It might look stupid. Them going full speed at fifty. So you could just imagine how it's going to look at them going half half speed at fifty. If they go full, it might look crazy. They they still going to look their age, but right. half speed they going to really look their age. And I don't want to. I don't want to see that. I don't want to yeah, see we'll half. I want to see. I want to see. And I want to see. I want to see. A fight. I want to see a fight. I'm, I, I, no, nah, I want to see a fight, Trey. I, I don't want to see no have. And, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll pray about it before we step out in the ring that nobody is hurt. No, nobody is killed, rather. Um, I, I just don't. I we'll just pray don't about it, Trey. We pray get, about it, Trey. Don't want nobody to get killed in the ring, man. Hey, that's, we'll, that's all I ask. We'll pray that's about it, I, man. That's all I ask. I'm not, I'm not saying they got to go soft. I'm just saying, don't kill nobody in the ring. Make sure <laughs> we, I'll call, I'll call you, you know, an hour before the, the event, and we'll pray about it. But I, <laughs> I we I don't want to see EMS at the boxing match. I don't want to see. Well, they're gonna be there anyway. But you know, <laughs> they're gonna be there anyway because they gotta be there. But well, let's just hope. And then let's be clear. And then let's uh-huh. be clear. 
the undercard, I don't know nothing about Nate Robinson's fighting ability. Well, there's some, well, there's some intrigue there. I, I do I do agree there. Well, I'm, I'm just saying if you – no, I'm talking about in, as far as safety. You're worried about uh, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones. They grown. They are grown-ass <laughs> old men that been box, that have been boxing for at least – uh, at least ten years, and I'm being modest. I'm being modest in saying ten years. So, uh, like they, they at least know how to protect themselves. If you're worried about anybody, you should be worried about Nate Robson. At least I know that Jake Paul has been in a <laughs> fight, you know, a professional fight, and and not for nothing won the fight against you know a nobody when he was a nobody. But um, mm-hmm. I don't know about Nate Robson in a professional fight because I've never seen him in a professional fight. I don't know of him having a history in professional fighting. If I'm concerned about anybody, I'm concerned about Nate Robinson. Well, we'll we'll pray for Nate Robinson also. But when you saying that makes me think about when he flipped J.R. Smith in that game against uh, <laughs> uh, the Nuggets when he was on the Knicks uh, a few years back. So. Uh, just a little bit of nostalgia there, but yeah, let's let's <laughs> pray for uh, let's pray for Nate Robinson. Let's too. pray that everybody is safe, but nah, go mm-hmm. all out. I want to see blood. So <laughs> <laughs> I want to see nobody going out in no wheelchair, man. Nah, <laughs> I want I want to see blood. I want I want that dog that Mike Tyson be crying about. I want that dude to come out. And what's the date of that fight? September September twelfth. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't announced. Okay. It. They say it's going to be pay per view. Um, that's that's the of extent course. of it. Yeah, but don't worry, um, I'll have it. <laughs> All right, no doubt, no doubt. Jelani, you got any thoughts about uh, Tyson and Roy Jones? I mean, I'm I'm a younger guy, young cast. I didn't get to see, of course, the prime fights that they had um, back in the day. I've just seen clips, and not even I don't even think clips against each other. Just you know, clips here and there. Yeah, um, of their different fights. So. Um, I'm so like my interest that I'm raised. I know it's not going to be the same. I'm going to have to probably YouTube, you know, one of their, you know, fights, their prime fights back in the day, but definitely want to see a show, which I'm sure they're going to give us. Um, so like that pretty much like he said, September 12th, it is after my birthday, I'll be tuned in. I'll be ready. Yes, sir. So, yeah. Um, the undercard though, is to me a little bit of a joke. Um, I'm, since I'm part of the younger generation, I know, I, I know you guys do know, know Logan Paul is, but I don't, I oh, let's be clear. Don't like we don't yeah. know who he is. Oh, God. oh I just well, did my research. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, just if you do <laughs> do a little bit more digging and stuff, he has a brother, and they're YouTube stars, and they're pretty annoying, and you know have had a lot of different scandals, and just guys that I don't, I don't particularly like. Um, but he, like you said, Paul has been in a few fights. He even fought another YouTuber. Uh, I know. I think he's lost one and won one. Okay. Um, Nate Robinson, I've just seen different, you know, different you or different Instagram videos of him training and stuff. And he looks, you know, he's an athlete. You know, he's played in the NBA. He used to play football as well, I yeah. believe. So it's like I just trust his athletic ability and skill to maybe hopefully be able to get into boxing and, and box. I know it's a little bit different, but I mean, I don't know. It's just it's just weird. It's different. I didn't when I heard that. I was like, that's a pretty weird undercard and a pretty weird fight in general. Yeah. Um. And but you know I guess just you know, part of the entertainment portion of it all kind of like you know when uh, Mayweather fought uh, McGregor. Conor McGregor <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so it was, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah so I mean it, it'll be interesting to see I do know like their their height I don't know about the weight difference but their height difference I think Logan Paul has at least four to five, five inches on him facts yeah so, yeah, yeah. so I don't know. It just it'll be interesting to see how that kind of all how the whole thing for both matches just you know comes about. But I definitely want to see Roy Jones and uh and uh, Mike Tyson go at it for sure. <laughs> oh, and Trey, just for a, a source of reference, uh, uh-huh. Paul Logan Paul is the guy that challenged Antonio Brown to a fight via Twitter. Uh, okay, uh, let- okay. Now it's starting to sink in now. Ooh, yeah. I was like, I knew that name from somewhere. I just can't remember exactly what the story was. So, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, so I got a couple NFL uh, stories right here. So, uh, Maestro, we talked about Jamal Adams maybe a couple of episodes ago and the possibility of him being traded to one of these uh, title contending teams. Well, the Jets... They kind of fell apart and decided, you know what, let's let's just trade them to the Seahawks. And they got a first round pick in 2021. I think they had a first round pick in 2022. Yeah. And they got Brad McDougal off the Seahawks. And a third rounder. Uh, to be traded back. And a third rounder. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 
Um, I'm gonna be clear about this. The Jets lost this trade, really, 100. percent Yeah, they 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 lost this trade 100 percent because I could see if the Jets were so like bomb when it comes to draft picks and stuff. When you look at the history of the Jets, and I and I know they they drafted Jamal Adams and that was a great pick, but they haven't been able to win with him. And it seems like when you look at the history of the Jets, when they draft these guys, it it doesn't end well in, in New York for these guys. So that's why I look at it and I say, okay, they get the draft picks back, which is cool. Um, you know, first couple first rounders, a third rounder, a player. It's equal compensation, no doubt about it. But if you're a Jets fan and you look at this and you say, okay, who are we going to get? Because, you know, the draft is a crapshoot, one. Number two, we don't know what the situation is going to be with college football, not possibly not going on this season because of COVID-19. And then you got questions about um, the upcoming draft, if players are going to be – well, not so much that they're going to be eligible, but you're going to have questions about whether these guys who are going to come out are going to be fit 100%. You combine all that with the fact that the Jets don't draft well consistently enough, I, I got to look at it and say the Jets 100% have lost this trade, even though we have yet to see what they're going to do with those picks. Yeah, I disagree with you 100, percent Trey. Um, the only, the only, the only argument, the only argument that made sense that you just said to me was that college football might not, might not even happen. Say so they won't know who to draft. But here, the thing about it is, is uh, the, the Jets. The I won't say the Jets won. I would say the Jets. Uh, no, I say the Jets won. Um, let's be clear. Jamal Adams didn't want to be there. Um, mm-hmm. You got a a good safety who you can insert into your defense right now and he won't be Jamal Adams but he'll he he will suffice um and look as far as draft picks um just like they picked Jamal Adams they could pick the next Jamal Adams and I get you saying that um you know they haven't had good luck but that don't mean stop drafting because you got bad luck you get as many draft picks as you can and specifically if you're a bad oh drafter. of course not yeah of and course not. yeah so that so you get as many draft picks as you can and two first rounders and a third um that that's three draft picks for one player that didn't want to play with you anyway is a pretty good pretty good uh pretty good deal and nobody wants to come to the new york jets so it's not like you got to, you know, you know, it's not like Earl Thomas is like, oh, man, I got to come to the New York Jets. I mean, they are a team that that is going far, that is going nowhere in no time, no time soon. No time soon. So no you time best, soon. so you best better build it up, build it up this way because the stocks is not there. Why are we here talking about the Jets? Fuck Woody Johnson. You should be. You should sell your team as well. You are a nasty piece of trash, and you need to get is it your life true? together. Um, is it true? Because I've heard it was allegations, and I I, I didn't read anything else okay. about it. Well, that me, it was. Well, it was me, allegations, and nothing else has come out. Has Nobody, sense. no females has said any has came out and said anything. Um, if and obviously if he did do this, then yeah, get him up out of there. Um, but well, then I, I you right. Put this, I'll walk I can't it back. put this on the level of the Redskins just yet. I can't well, put it on the level of that just yet. Well, I'm until angry. We, I'm angry, Trey. I'm angry that the that <laughs> these white people keep doing that. These white people keep coming out with these allegations, and I want black ownership. So yeah, 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 yeah. I should get started. Getting, you should start. Right? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Look, they mm-hmm. put cancer culture on us. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to return the favor. Reciprocity is important in this world. Um, <laughs> get him out of him. Uh-oh. Yeah, Jets get them out of here. Ownership. They could definitely use some mm-hmm. new ownership. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. But uh, to the Jamal Adams point, yeah, uh, Jamal Adams. This is this is a, this worked out for the Jets. Um, this worked out. There, there's there's no there's no other way you could say it. I'll say this. I'll say this. I'll say this. They to me they lost this trade until I see what they do with those picks. And if those picks turn out to be because you you know what he's going to do in seattle and it's not even to say that and i know you're not saying that the seahawks lost a trade per se yeah because you know what he's going to do with the seahawks they're probably going to go to a super bowl in the next two three years you know if they you know lock him up to a long-term deal 
Oh, but you not know because what of him. Doing. It won't be because of him. It'll be. It, hopefully, it's because DK Metcalf becomes the wide receiver sure, that I believe sure. him to be. Sure, but I but Jamal Adams. I mean, you, the Seahawks have gotten maybe just an inch better with Jamal. Yeah, Adams no, they no roster. He is definitely an upgrade from from McDougal. Uh, mm-hmm. But again, when you look at it from the Jets' perspective, uh, we got rid of some drama in our locker room. We got rid of a dude that we was going to have to pay, and we clearly didn't want to pay because we didn't. We don't really care for him like that. Um, and along with the fact that you about to have to pay Sam Donald soon, that's about to come up. And let's be clear, he's going to be there, and he's going to get paid. I'm, I'm not even sold that he's the dude just yet. Well, they they seem to be. They seem to be, mm-hmm. um, yeah. They 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 clear games. they clear they clear in future space and bringing in young people that they won't have to pay for another four years. Um, I this is and then got a viable safety, a viable safety that you're not going to have to break the bank for. You're not going to have to break well, the bank for McDougal. That they did. That they did. They they got a serviceable guy that can fill. Um, not. You know, not necessarily be Jamal Adams, but he can be serviceable for them. He's a good safety. Um, yeah, he's a good safety. He's a good safety. I'm I'm not crazy about that Jets roster overall, if you ask me. I mean, you got Le'Veon there. But that's why you need picks, my nigga. Really, that's about it. What's but that's up? why you need. But that's why you need picks. <laughs> yeah, and you, and they they got to use them picks right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They, that's why you need picks. But at the end of the day. The Jets got to make the right picks, and they haven't been doing that lately. Exactly. Yeah. For for me, I kind of, I'm. I mean, I agree with both of you guys because, like Trey just said, I'm pretty sure you're not saying Seattle lost it, and Trey not really. You say, I guess you said you have to wait and see what the picks turn out to be. I guess to me, what it tells me is like, yes, they wanted to get a guy at the locker room that you know has been real vocal lately that they're gonna have to pay, didn't have the money for. Um. But I guess to me, it says a lot more about Seattle, I guess, than it's saying about the Jets. Because I think now, honestly, with the type of offseason that Seattle's had, I think they're quietly thinking that, like, this year or next year, like you're saying, Super Bowl mm-hmm. title. Yeah. <laughs> because they've added a lot of a lot of good pieces. Like you say, you don't – not every day besides, you know, Jalen Ramsey last year, like you're giving up two first-round picks, whether, you know, you yeah. know it is, you know, back-to-back years. But – Kind of like that's what I've been seeing. A lot of people or a lot of teams and organizations are making trades for guys that are established and they know what they're going to get out of them now versus then, like you said, with their uh, draft. It's a crab shoot, um, especially like now, like more than likely Seattle's going to finish pretty high. Like those draft picks are going to turn to later round draft picks. And we always know like after kind of like one to 15, it gets real murky. We don't know who's going to go where. So like you said, Jets point, it depends on who they draft with these two back-to-back first-round picks, you know, in consecutive years. Um, but I do like – I like I like it for both teams. Like you said, they definitely got a serviceable guy. They got three pretty high draft picks or, you know, at least two first-rounders and a third-rounder. You know, you can find diamonds in the rough in the third round as well. So I like it for their long, long-term long build, building process. But it depends on, you know, who, like you said, Trey, who's making these picks, who's in charge because – one, I don't believe Adam Gates should have ever been hired as the head coach. They need Facts. some type of they need some type of change in that you know in their head coaching tree, and also I believe in the um, you know head head office. Um, but I'm gonna say it, they got the picks. What they do with it definitely would tell you know how their future is gonna go. I believe, like Maestro also said. Sam Darnold's the guy, their guy. That's who they're pretty much I think gonna go with. They're gonna pay him, so they had to get rid of you know a guy in their locker room in order to make room, you know, for that money when it comes time to pay Donald. But I definitely like it for both teams. Seattle continues to look scary and scarier to me, in my opinion. So, and, and, uh, and to your point about Seattle, Jelani, Russell yeah. Wilson just had a baby. So, you mm-hmm. know, he bought the, he, oh, yeah, he bought he's the, he's ready to ball. yeah, he, yeah, he, he ready to ball for that boost. Mm-hmm. Bowl, man. Yeah. He definitely just to, ready to do that. Yeah, and just to play devil's advocate, we never know. Antonio Brown worked out with him too. You had Antonio Brown, Tyler Man. Lockett, and DJ Metcalf. Man, you got Jamal Adams. That got, would be crazy. They yeah. still got um, what you call it? They still got Wagner. Um, yeah, getting a little bit older. They they just have a, they got solid team, solid pieces, and we yep. know what Pete Carroll could do with a solid team and solid pieces. So. I mean, like I said, they're just looking scary and scary to me. They get another established guy who is coming up on his fourth or fifth year. 
Um, I like the trade for both teams, but I definitely, I, if I had to give an edge to somebody, I do. I give it to Seattle. Okay. All right. Um, what the hell is Le'Veon Bell so mad about? <laughs> uh, so I think I saw this briefly, Maestro. So th- was this a tweet in regards to Jamal yeah, Adams? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So okay. essentially, uh, <laughs> this is Le'Veon Bell's tweet. People do all the hooting and hollering to get you bought in, just to leave. LOL. Like people, people weird, yo. The internet got these dudes doing whatever for attention, even when they tell you shit they don't believe themselves. <laughs> what is he talking? Like, what is he talking? Uh, that, that 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 sounded like a bunch of rambling right there. Well, okay, like, so this is this about. is well, essentially how I'm uh, interpreting it. He's saying that um, Jamal Adams was lobbying for you know lobbying to Le'Veon Bell for him to come to the New York Jets, and oh, then man. a year later he just leaves as if things don't change from one year to the next, um, and then he blames the internet. Uh, blames the internet for all these types of uh, thoughts and uh, situations and um, even when they don't believe the shit themselves I don't quite understand what that means Um, and then uh, Jamal Adams replies with noted Mm -hmm. see you week 14 because the uh, Jets play the Seahawks in week 14 Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, your boy even responded uh, Le'Veon responded I don't have the uh, exact tweet, but saying something to the effect of, um, you know, what does that mean? You will see me week 14. Like, I just talked to you on the phone or, what you know, whatever he was saying. Um, I do want to know what noted see you week 14 means. <laughs> um, uh, I could tell you how I interpret it. I interpret it like, ooh, uh, when I see you, it's on site. Um but I know that's not really true. Y'all not gonna fight on the football field. So what? Yeah, I don't even think it's even like they got beef with each other. Like it, it, here, here's what I take from it, because like Jelani pointed out a few minutes ago, Jamal Adams has been very vocal about um, how the Jets are dealing with whether they wanted to trade for him, whether they wanted to you know ship him out of town and all that stuff, and he's been very um, vocal about getting that contract extension from the Jets. And so, to me, it sounds more like Le'Veon's kind of salty because, like, you know, Jamal Adams, in many people's eyes, is probably the best player on the Jets. So, for the best player on the team to want out of town or to, you know, force his way out of town, Le'Veon's looking at that like, yo, like, we trying to build something here. You're the best player on the team. I'm the, you know, I might be the best or the second best player on the team. Yo, let's, you know, let's ride this thing out. Let's see how this thing goes. And, you know, the trade happens. And shortly after, now he's got a tweet about it and kind of be all in his feelings about it. That's kind of how I take it. So as far as him saying, see you in week 14, that's just, you know, that that's more like Ed. Um, not Ed Reed. That's more like Eric Reed and Malcolm Jenkins kind of going face to face in the middle of the field before you know before the game like they did last year. That that that's kind of what I see that as. Like okay. they just going they're going to talk their little talk in the middle of the field coin coin toss or whatever, and then just going to play football. Yeah, these I, dudes, these dudes ain't going to throw hands. They not yeah, throwing hands. Yeah, but you know you know I take that a certain way. Like words mean something to me. So when I read noted after I just got finished saying something, you know, talking to you, Jai crazy, and mm-hmm. I and then you reply to me and say noted, no, see you, see you week fourteen, like nah, you ain't got to see me week fourteen, nigga. You see me next week, nigga. Fuck all that, <laughs> uh, you know. I don't, yeah. So I don't, I, don't, I get, I, I'm get, I'm with you. I have to assume that they meant something else by it because. Um, I, I don't pretend to be a fighter, but I do know what a threat is, and I um and that that tweet um, without context. And let's be clear, we're all speculating because we don't know exactly what was said between right. each other. Um, right. That sounds like a threat to me, and I and I, I I wouldn't take that. I wouldn't take that lightly. Yeah, same here. I mean, I don't know, like full on, full on threat, but it does seem like both of them kind of in their feelings. In my in, in my opinion, of course, I think. Jamal Adams probably was a big advocate of him coming and signing with the Jets to, you know, try to put something together because 
like, I mean, even if you look, I guess, look at it early on, Jamal Adams had been, you know, free, like, advocating for the Jets. Like, he, I think he wanted to be there. He wanted to stay there, of course, before they made that Adam Gates hire. Right. Um, so, um, I think he was a big, you know, part of him wanting to come there. And I guess Le'Veon, his, in his eyes, I feel like he's, you know, in his feelings because, you know, he didn't have the year that he was supposed to have. The team as a whole didn't have the year they were supposed to have, you know. There's a lot of dysfunction. He sees it. He knows it. You know, there's another guy in charge. There's a guy in charge that he doesn't, that isn't to the ca- caliber of, you know, your guy in Pittsburgh, um, yeah. you know, yeah. with the rain. So it's like, I think to him, it's like he's kind of realized, oh, like, kind of like I made a mistake or whatever. And now he's kind of in his feelings because a guy that wanted him to be there is now gone. And, you know, he's like, if you see Le'Veon, Le'Veon takes the Twitter a lot. So, mm-hmm. you know, he kind of going to get his feelings out there saying, you know, kind of like, you know, guys always do this and that. And then, like, you know, they're all talk, pretty much all talk and no action, whatever. So he sees him gone. He has to stay there. And, you know, he's just in his feelings. Jamal Adams, on the other hand, he's another vocal guy. He's probably in his feelings as well. I saw that as, a, you know, as a slight to him, you know, saying, like, all right, cool. I see what you're talking about. Note it. And then I probably, then I can obviously fight, fight. But I think in the, in the, I guess in the realms of battle on the field, it's like, all right, if Le'Veon gets that stretch handoff and, you know, mm-hmm. Jamal yeah. Adams coming, you know, shooting down the pipe, it's like it's on and popping in. So right. Um, right. that's just kind of how, you know, that's what I took from me. I think they both just kind of was in their feelings. They're both outspoken guys and, you know. No, we fourteen. I guess we'll see what happens. Well, I will tell you what, Le'Veon Bell would have never had these problems if he would have took the fourteen and a half million that we offered him in Pittsburgh. Exactly, exactly. Which same. was, just, by the way, which was by the way, the, the highest same. running backs at that point, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. Zeke, yeah. Zeke hadn't gotten his deal yet, at and, the and, and and it was before Todd Gurley. So that's and yep. so when Todd Gurley got his. That's when the battery was super putting his back, and he thought he was going to get that kind of money. But it's like, nah, mm-hmm. bro. And, 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 you know, nah. Uh, at <laughs> that point of the game, Todd Gurley had more upside. And, you know, it didn't work out for him, but he had more upside at that, at that stage of the game. So that's why he got paid as such. You could have got the 14, 14 and a half, and you'd be on a winning. And let's be clear. We'd be a playoff team. We would have been a playoff team with Le'Veon Bell on our team last year. And you'd be in the playoffs, and we'd have a, a, a amazing defense with, with, that's going to be number one this year. And With Mason Rudolph as the quarterback? With Mason, yeah, yeah, we would have made the playoffs. Okay. I'm confident okay. we would have made the playoffs. Oh, no, I, I just wanted to be clear. Yeah, no, I I'm to make very sure clear. That, okay, okay. Yeah, that's how I feel. You know, Head, head, uh, helmet to the head, and everything. They would have hey, made the playoffs. Hey, bro! <laughs> Allegedly called him Miles Garrett, nigga, and everything. We would have been in the playoffs, and you know what? And that would have raised the stock for my man Mike Tomlin, who low key had to be in the top in the finalists for Coach of the Year. He had to be. Mm. Mm. I just I thought about I... this. That that helmet to the head probably wouldn't have if he if Le'Veon was there. Yeah, y'all, y'all might have beat the y'all might have beat the Browns in that game, and that would have never happened. <laughs> well, now nah, we was getting dogged that game. We were getting blown. <laughs> yeah, we were getting blown out there. We were damn near being blown out that game. Like we yeah. were, we were, we were a touchdown away from a, a official blowout. So I, I was, um, I mean, but maybe it would have happened different if you know. But yeah, man, you should have left Pittsburgh, and. Yeah. I'm not mad. We'll graciously take you back. We just ain't got to pay you 14 now because you had a trash <laughs> ass year in it with the Jets. So, and, and speaking of and speaking of your Steelers and Twitter, what what is Stephon Tuitt talking about? I don't know on Twitter, man. I don't know, bro. I don't know what man, he's talking about. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna read this real quick, bro. Hey, I tell I, I'm you gonna read what. This real quick. I tell you what. what. He anchors our front line. <laughs> so. He he was rambling on Twitter. I'm not even going to read the entire four tweets. I'm going to just read this one particular tweet he had. He says, also, I'm not kneeling for the flag and screw anybody who has a problem with that. My grandmother was an immigrant from the Caribbean and age worked her ass off to bring 20 people over the right way. She had no money and educated herself to be a nurse. She's living good now. So... I, I I got. Obviously, I know what he's saying. Just shut up. I know what he's saying. I, just, well, just well, I, I yeah, I I know what he's trying to say, but 
what does your mother coming from the, or your grandmother mm. coming from the Caribbean have to do with kneeling or standing for the flag? Well, he's a two. Let me tell you, and, and and let's be clear. I don't think he fully realizes what he's saying. I get what he's trying to say, but it's stupid. And because he's not a popular enough player, he's not going to get all the smoke that he deserves for saying such ignorant comments. He's saying that if a woman from the islands could come, a black woman from the islands can come and have the success that she's had, she has had. That there is no way that. Um, you know, there you you don't. I don't have to kneel. I could I could work around all this. There's ways to work around all this. While y'all sitting here kneeling, I could be making change. I could be putting my head down and working. The problem is, is that your grandmother. He said grandmother, right? His your grandmother. grandmother yeah. Your grandmother shouldn't have had to work as hard as she did to bring twenty people over. And the reason why she had to work as hard as she did, which was probably a hundred times harder than a white grandmother that came for, that came from out of the country, is because the color of her skin. So you should be kneeling for your grandmother, bruh. <laughs> And I'm sure, well, I don't know if his grandmother is, I guess his grandmother's still alive. I hope she set him down by now. Like, nah, Slim, you I was need to, you say. need to, yeah, because let's be clear. I was treated like a black person, like a, like a, I was treated just like the other black people in America because of the color of my skin. So now, not only did I have to uh, do the correct things, but I couldn't make, I didn't have room for error. I had to work mm-hmm. 10 times harder than a, 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 a white woman, a, a white woman from France or you know Greece or whatever who came in and had you right. know and made and bought twenty people from her native land and brought it to America. That black woman had to work hundreds times harder to make that happen because of the color of her skin, and that's why we're kneeling. So you should be kneeling, bro. And your 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 example, nah, it's it's stupid and it's not it's not thought out. And that's the it's- problem with people who get on Twitter. Um and just spew shit, just just spew it because they you know they on the road typing and shit. Nah, bro, you got you you got to think about that. That that wasn't a that wasn't a a good tweet. It wasn't a good tweet. It was ignorant. And it, it wasn't it wasn't a good tweet. And if he and if his grandmother and I hope she if she's alive that she sat this man down and explained to him that the country that she came from was colonized by European countries. And I don't know which island it was. If it was Jamaica, then the UK colonized Jamaica. If it was Guyana, then the Dutch colonized Guyana. So I I hope he, you know, understands that the folks that came from the islands were just as much um, oppressed as blacks here in this country. Mm. So, you know... So him saying that along with not kneeling for the flag to me was just dumb. I, the, the two don't mesh. The two points he was making don't mesh mm-hmm. at all. One mm-hmm. has nothing to do with the other. Mm-hmm. And I, I just hope that he takes this as a learning lesson and, you know, learn some history behind, you know, why people come from the islands. And as, you know, as a descendant of Guyana, my grandfather was born in Guyana and came to the States as well. But I understand that he had to work twice as hard and he also was oppressed while trying to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So I I think Stefan to it, he he needs the history lesson, man, for certain. Yeah. I'm pretty much agreeing with both y'all, piggybacking both y'all. Like Maestro said, it's, I don't know, at this point, it's kind of, it's a little flabbergasting to see people like continue to make these certain type of takes given everything, like, I guess, Given everything that's happening, like innocent, like you know, like, gotta read the room. Like even when I know you probably y'all probably talked about this a long time ago. Even when Drew Brees said what he said, it's like in yeah. the middle of right. Like like everything that's going on. This is what you thinking. This is what you're gonna say. Like you like Mike just said. Like I, I get kind of where he's coming from. I think it's honestly like a false sense of. I think with the United States, everyone has like a false sense of like you know. Of course, like this is you know the place of dreams and you can come here and you can make it and you can do this and that and that's kind of like that clouds a lot of what happens and what goes on mm-hmm. like you guys are saying like like i understand probably like maybe where he came from where his grandma came from like it may have you know been hard a hard life and like here i guess it gives them some type of opportunity but like y'all are saying like the flag and you know standing for social injustice and black people being you know killed by the police every day doesn't correlate with 
with what he's saying pretty much and i guess like to him it's like this country has done a lot for my grandmother and my family so i'm not gonna disrespect it by you know kneeling or not being president for the for the national anthem but it's like it really has no correlation if you're like really like open your eyes and see that all right like you guys are saying like your grandma probably was really like oppressed and had to work a thousand times harder in order to get get where to where she was to even you know to be here so it's like it shouldn't have been like that in the first place it shouldn't be like that at all so it's like to really honor your grandmother like you should be like you said you should be standing with your people and kneeling or you know bringing some type of some type of change or awareness versus like making some type of tweet like this and you know having this type of thought process so like you said try hopefully someone in his family if his grandmother's still alive hopefully someone got into his ear sat him down gave him a lesson and hopefully he's thinking differently about what he said now but you know i don't know like kind of like with the drew Brees thing when he apologized i don't know if you know two three days thinking on is going to change his ideas and his ideology and stuff so but well, that's just kind of like what I'm thinking. Yeah, well, fortunate, fortunate enough for uh, Stefan to it, he's not popular enough to get the re- exactly. the Drew the Drew Brees <laughs> smoke. And while we are dealing with uh, not as popular players doing fuck shit in regards to the <laughs> movement, uh, San Francisco Giants pitcher Sam Coonrod, how ironic, uh, was uh, a, a picture was taken of him not kneeling. As a myriad of other San Francisco Giant players, all white, were kneeling. Um, and he was asked, why didn't he kneel? His quote says, as such, I am a Christian, so I just believe that I can't, I just believe that I can't kneel before anything besides God. I just can't get on board with a couple of things I've read about Black Lives Matter and how they lean towards Marxism. Uh... Mm-hmm. And I and I wish I had enough information about what Marxism is, and I hadn't really had the time to really do the research on that, so I'm not really going to comment on the well, Marxism part. Well, well, hold on, hold on, Trey. You could, you could, and you can keep on talking. I'll let you finish your point because the the, uh-huh. the blessed thing about what we do in in our, in our platform is that we are a Google away from figuring out what Marxism is. Yeah, you, you, you're definitely right about We're that. We're Google but, away, so you can keep on... Uh, yeah, you, you're definitely right about that, but just to kind of my thoughts on what he said in terms of him being a Christian, um, okay, you, you you entitled to your opinion, you entitled to your remarks or whatnot. Um, I mean, if he'd have took the Ray Lewis route and just, uh, <laughs> you know, got on both knees, pause... Yeah. Um, you know, with the with the rest of the players and just said, hey, you know, I got on both knees because I was in a praying stance, uh, you know, while the anthem was playing. I'd have been like, I, right, you know, because, you know, when Ray Lewis did it, it was kind of like, man, mm-hmm. you know, you ain't got to explain yourself. But, you know, I, I would have been OK with that excuse from him. Um, but to say because you're a Christian and you don't believe some of the things that. Um, you know, of what Black Lives Matter is about, then, bruh, I would like to know what these things you're referring to. Are you referring to the statement itself? Are you referring to the group that is, you know, the people that form the group Black Lives Matter? Is there a conspiracy theory that you have about this particular group? Like, I would I would like to know what what is it that you have a, a problem with for you to be the only player on the Giants that's standing and everybody and it's not just his teammates. Yeah. All the Dodgers, all the Dodgers, you know, took a knee. Yeah. You know, right right before that game. Yeah. So for you to be the only cat that, you know, is saying this and did this, it something something's not right up there, man. Yeah, something is, something, something's not right. So I'll read the um, I read what came up on Google. Uh, central to Marx's central to Marx's theory is an explanation of social change in terms of economic factors, according to which mean 
I don't know what the okay. I'm confusing myself. I, I'll, I'll just read it and see, and y'all see if y'all make sense, <laughs> and y'all make sense of this. Um, uh, central to Marxist theory is an explanation of social change in terms of economic factors, according to which the means of production provide the economic base which influence or determines the political and ideological ideological. I'm sure I'm not saying that right. Superstructure. Marx and Engels predicted the revolutionary overthrow of capitalism by the proletariat and eventual attainment of a classless communist society. Um, I'm not smart. I'm not that smart anyway. So I can't, I can't, I can't tell you what all that means in language. I got two, terms. I got two college degrees, and even I can't figure that out. <laughs> um, but I could tell you, but what I could, what I could tell you, it seems like don't none of this shit got nothing to do with nothing. Um, <laughs> so in my ignorance, I will say, Coon Rod, you can kiss my ass, and you're a racist. Yeah, from I, I can maybe try to, you know, to hey man, kick we, it to. I think what is what he's trying to say, or what not what he's trying to say, what the definition means is um, that he sees Black Lives Matter as a group that is trying to overthrow. I guess pretty much, I guess the way that America is run, like capitalism. When you say that like, they don't, in a way, he's trying to call us like a communist type group. If that makes sense, kind of like they believe like an equal structure for all. So what? Like, <laughs> so he's saying he don't believe that everybody should be equal. That's what that's same, what he's saying kind, he believes. Kind is kind is, and, and from what I've digested from the definition of Marxism, because I know it has a lot to do with the eco- economical aspect of uh-huh. trying to, I guess, to be on basically become like on an equal plane, yeah. or everyone, you know. Right, has the equal yeah yeah this equal economic stature so right. that's that's kind of what I'm pulling for from mm. it so in a way kind of like what you say it, in short it seems like he doesn't fully believe in equal equal opportunities for everyone because he thinks that Black Lives Matter in a sense yeah. is trying to I guess push a communistic a communist like. Uh, um, okay, now see, yeah. now you now yeah. you talking to me, I I, I, I get yeah. I get what he's trying to say. You can still kiss my ass. Um, <laughs> yeah. So essentially, um, he has a problem with. See, I see. I don't, and obviously, we'd have to hear his side of the story. I don't know oh. if he's. I don't know if he has a problem with us having equal rights or or us as a whole having the equal having an equal uh, economic structure. Um, oh. Either way, man. Let's be clear. I don't think. I don't think every black person should be in the same economic, uh, should have the same amount of money as every white person. If you don't work for your money, you know, then you shouldn't have your money. Or you don't earn your money, you shouldn't have your money. That's not what I'm saying. But we should certainly have the same exact opportunities uh, as every everybody else in this country. We should have the same exact rights. So we should have the opportunity if we want to earn our riches, we should have the, our, the opportunities to earn our riches. And if we want to have the opportunity to not earn our riches, then we should have that too, which obviously we already have. Um, so if he's speaking to black, if he's speaking to Black Lives Matter and saying um, the ideas of Marxism being that we shouldn't have an equal economic structure. Um, we should at least have an opportunity to an equal op- uh, uh, equal op- economic structure. We should at least have an opportunity to, to build that. Um, so if you're speaking against that, yeah, you can kiss my whole ass. And I, and I wish you could and, hear it. And, and you know what's unfortunate about this? And it just kind of in my opinion. And this is all um, the ignorance, th- by the way. It's important to note that all three of us do not have a 100% uh, understanding of what Marxism is, and this is speaking based on what we could comprehend from the definition. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought Jelani explained it pretty good. I mean, right there. I mean, just to kind of get to the point of communism equals equal opportunities at making the amounts of money in this country. So I, I, I kind of get from his explanation of what this guy was trying to say. I, in my opinion, is just unfortunate for a few reasons. Number one, um, there's not enough black players in Major League Baseball to confront this cat. 
Um, mm-hmm. Particularly on the San Francisco Giants. There's not enough black people to confront this dude, number one. Number two, he gets to hide by his statements because he plays in Major League Baseball. And therefore, it doesn't get the coverage that the NFL or the NBA would get if a white player from both of those leagues had, you know, came out with something similar, i.e. Drew Brees. Um, So I I, I think it's unfortunate that um, this story doesn't get enough traction for those you know reasons i just laid out yeah but you but he can but coon rod you can kiss my ass he, well, yeah he can go he, yeah he can you, go, you can kiss my ass and um i don't know how how far uh g g uh how far geographically if i'm saying the word right uh michael betts is from san francisco but i'm down for the pull-up <laughs> Mm. I am definitely down for the pull up. Yeah, hey, um, and I know we ain't far from Oakland. And yeah, you know how real Oakland. Can, so. Yeah, yeah, we we need, we need to pull up. We need to have that conversation. Like, oh, that's what you stand on, player? Because I know I seen Michael Betts on his uh, on his Black Lives Matter. So, hey, we, we might Mookie need Mookie Betts. You're referring to Mookie Betts, right? Michael, you, but ain't, ain't his real name Michael though? Uh, you know what? You, you might be onto that. I yeah. don't know. I'll, I'll check that because yeah. I, I I do agree. I don't think Mookie is on his birth certificate. So yeah, yeah I think uh, it's I, I, I'll, I'll buy that. Yeah. So uh, Trey, man, you 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 get you had a couple of days to uh, kind of digest some information and you know get some uh, opinions on it. Uh, Tom Thibodeau is the coach of the Knicks. Is that a fit? That is official, correct? Uh, it is not official it yet. It is not official. They're, okay. still, they're still working on the deal, the details of it, but all in likelihood, he's going to be the coach of the Knicks moving forward. And after giving it a few days to process and really think about it, I like the move. Okay. Um, this team needs some discipline. This team needs a defensive philosophy. And I get that. In this day and age, there's no defense being played uh, in the league. I mean, guys give up 109 points a game. That's mm-hmm. considered defense nowadays. Right. Um, I, I would much rather the Knicks give up 109 points if it means we're going to score 100 and, you know, 15, 10. 120 <laughs> points a game. Yeah, right, 110. You know, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, Thibodeau has got – I mean, look at the track record, man. Um, with the Bulls, with Derrick Rose, MVP year, uh, 60 plus game season. And, um, I think they had like back to back 60, you know, win seasons. Um, and you know, it was unfortunate that Rose got hurt that one year, but I remember a series, um, the Bulls played against the Brooklyn Nets, right? I don't know if you remember this maestro, but this was when Darren Williams came over to the Nets. They had Joe Johnson and, uh, Brooke Lopez, on the team and that was that was a team that was favored to at least get to the second round of the playoffs that year um and you had a bulls team that had, had no I, I believe it was no joking noah no derrick rose they had nate robinson on the team they had um luau dang on the team basically just a bunch of guys you know like basically a, a few scrappy guys on the team they took that Nets team to a seventh game and beat Nets in game seven in Brooklyn and, you know, went on to get, you know, bounced by the heat the next round. But um, I looked at that series and I said that that's got to be the coaching of Tom Thibodeau right there to be without your best player and still win a series against one of the better teams in the league at that time or considered to be one of the more talented teams at that time. I, I had to give the guy credit. Look what he did when he went over to Minnesota, and I get it didn't end so well, but they gave Thibodeau, in my opinion, too much power in terms of you know front office decisions and all that stuff. Like it felt like it, he had too much on his plate. So when you look at that Minnesota situation, they had gone 14 years without a postseason berth. Mm-hmm. That guy comes in, you got Carl Anthony Towns, you get Jimmy Butler in a trade, uh, Andrew. Will- Wiggins is what the third, fourth best player on the team, and they go to the playoffs. Even with Butler, I think missed like I don't know fifteen games that year, and they ended up winning forty seven games, and and got to the playoffs in the Western Conference. So Thibodeau's track record speaks for itself. I love the move. 
I think it'll instill some discipline with this basketball team. They need to play defense, and I'm 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 here for it, man. Now they just gotta get you know some better players, and hopefully, um, you know they could build that through the draft. Jelani, where you at, man? Tom Thibodeau as the Knicks coach. I mean, I don't know. I kind of I don't know. I'm like. 50-50 with it. Just yeah, <laughs> don't really. Yeah, don't know. I'm with you. Don't it's really. Yeah. It's Johnny. It's my show. My show is just. He's just. My show doesn't mean that. He's just trying to mess with me. That's all that it's, is. I don't know. It's <laughs> it's because it's a multitude of things. Like you know, to me though, we see him. Or to me, I see him. Of course, he's a, he's a deepest minded guy, strong minded guy. It's almost like like it's his way or no way, and that's kind of what. I mean, I know it wasn't that's not the reason, but to me, it's kind of like why a lot of players got kind of ran down in Chicago. It's like mm. why kind of you know diminished. Yeah, diminished. It diminished like the run they could have possibly had because of you know, I guess this a dictatorship. Style. Yeah, and um, it's just like kind of like it feels like a kind of coaching care stuff. It's been in so many different places, like in, in my eyes, to where it's like I wish they would have gave. I, but it's also like the Knicks too, so I see kind of like what they're trying to do. You know, they're trying to kind of like they need like an overhaul, like from top to bottom. <laughs> which they I don't need know. To, they I need to get Vivi uh, yeah. Stiviano up in there to get Dolan up out of there. Yeah, man, exactly. that's what I'm saying. That, like, that's what they, they need. need. Yep, that's what that's what they need. But it's like I guess for right now, to me, I guess I see it kind of like as a plug in. I know it's five year deal that they're talking, but I guess it's someone that can they're seeing like hopefully it's some type of leadership going forward. In a sense, like so, like a strong personality, strong leadership going forward. But I don't know how really it's gonna mesh with you guys a young core, um, yeah. because you guys are a young team, and all y'all gonna do is probably get younger. I don't, I personally don't foresee really any. There's not this upcoming free agency class isn't strong in 2021. I don't really see it happening. They're still gonna be right. trash. Yeah. Well, I'll, well, look if 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 we have young players, and if the narrative about Tom Thibodeau giving players too many minutes to play, then he's got the players that's going to play 40 minutes a night. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, they're young. Right? Could they're young. He got them anyway, right? Yeah, he, he got yeah. the players to play 45 minutes a night. I so, hope, but you know. going to diminish long-term development in a, and affect them in a you know, negative way? Like, you know, cause, start causing injuries? Does it cause friction in the locker room? Like, I think they definitely will respect him. You know, he's a guy that's been in the league. He knows what he's doing. He's coach guys like Jimmy Butler, Derrick Rose, and everything. But to me, I don't know. I I just personally don't fully like the hire, but I see why they hired him. Like, that makes yeah. sense. It's almost like, to me, it's like a, not to switch up sports, but like a Mike McCarthy hire for Dallas, in a sense. Kind mm. of like, it's a, it's a guy that's proven. And you know, kind of like what he's about, what he's gonna do, uh, and like you're trying to piece him with what you got. So, like you said, like you got young guys, and you got young talented guys. So it's like you feel like Thibodeau is gonna pretty much bring the most out of them, the best out of them, and he's gonna be that leadership to you know to push them to be as great as they possibly can be, which I think they need. So, like I said, I'm kind of like on the fence with it. It's just like I just not sure fully how it's gonna mesh with them being a younger crowd, younger group. And him and his type of coaching style, like, you know, Mike sure saying kind of like the dictatorship type. And um, a side note to that, side yeah. note to that, um, Mike Woodson interviewed for the coaching job also. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's rumors that he's going to be a part of the assistant coaching staff, which okay. I'm OK with. I would have I would have been OK also if he would have got the head coaching the head, job. Yeah. But, yeah. but, you know, it's Thibodeau, Mike Woodson's on the staff. Um, I'm I'm okay with it. Now they just gotta you know put it together and you know keep Dolan's ass upstairs. Hey, so talk to me about projections, Trey. Are they gonna make the playoffs in five years? Uh, in five years? Within the next five years? Within the next five years, are the Knicks gonna make the playoffs? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to take that bet. You willing yeah. to take that? Okay. Within the, within, within the next five years, yeah. Mm-hmm. Meaning that he's meaning that Thibodeau is there all five years, right? Yes. Yes, I, I I believe they'll they'll make the playoffs. Gotcha. Even if it means we win forty games and we're a, a seven or eight seed, because you know it's still the Eastern Conference. Yeah, right, right. So, you know, that's why that's why I'm at with it, man. And and I didn't talk and I didn't talk about this um before, but um, World Wide West. 
who was yeah. hired by the Knicks mm-hmm. you know, a, a few months mm-hmm. back. Um, I don't know much about him it's except P. the I fact moves. that he's got a lot of pull yes. with you know some of the players, yeah. entertainers, and you yeah. know the industry and all P. that. PR move, um, much like the Steve Stout move. PR move. PR <laughs> move. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, don't know much about the cat, but hoping it makes some kind of difference. Um, let me let me say what's up to the few people in the chat room because they've been here specifically. Uh, Jordan jo Rosario keeping it one hundred. Uh, Big Care three hundred three who's in the chat room. Vince Wright who's in the chat room. Um, I just want to make sure I uh, shouted them out. Um, Jordan Rosario um, also saying that I was right when talking about uh, the Richard uh, the Marxism comments from the Coon Rod nigga. Um, yeah. he's, he's saying that um, yeah he's saying I was right I just like to point out when people say I'm right um, Jordan mm-hmm. Rosario's latest comment nothing will change for the Knicks until the team gets sold Dolan keeps getting in the way um, nice. I tend to I, I tend to uh, echo nice. that sentiment um, he, he gotta go um, we need to get Dream Doll in there to go ruin to go ruin it for uh, ruin it for him um, if you're not familiar with Dream Doll she's a very attractive uh, New York rapper. She can go in here and go and stir some things up, get Dolan about here. We rooting for so, you. So every time these stories come up, like with Dan Snyder with the sex you know, situation with the Redskins or Woody Johnson with the allegations of saying racist stuff, I always say to myself every time I read these articles, damn, why couldn't this be Dolan? Yeah. Like, why, 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 why couldn't this be James Dolan? Like... <laughs> You know what's crazy? How sports, how sports leads us to those types of wishes, man. We we shouldn't be wishing those types of things on people. People are losing their jobs and their livelihoods. But I mean, but let's be clear. He's going to sell that team. And he's going to get a billion dollars for selling that team. And yes, sure, is he going to lose sure. money over a lifetime? Yes, but I mean, come on, bro. You can't be mad at leaving. You know, a, a severance package of a billion dollars. Like you be yeah. all right. And, and let's remember this. Just to just to make a comparison, Maestro Jelani, the Redskins in the last couple years, when you watch their games, you see empty seats in that stadium. Like the fans are making a real big, you know, statement with that. When it comes to watching Knicks games, the Garden gets packed every night, no matter how bad the basketball team plays. They pack that place every night. That that's that's the difference. They trash, and as long as that and, and as long as that keeps happening, you're not going to see much change when it comes to the ownership and the way he goes about his daily routine and all that. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it means he gets in the way of the coach, he gets in the way of the GM. It's going to be that way because the dollars keep coming because we keep patronizing the product. Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah. we keep showing up at the games. Team is trash and y'all fan and y'all are trash as fans. <laughs> eat oh, that was so perfect. That yeah. was so perfect. Yeah, man. eat that. Yeah, eat <laughs> that. Hold that down. <laughs> that was that was so perfect, man. <laughs> hey, man. I, um, I got one more thing, man. I I, I wanted to get you guys' takes uh, takes on um the uh, ten or so NFL players that have decided that they are not participating in this upcoming NFL season. Uh, so there's six of them in particular with the Patriots, um, Patrick Chung, uh, Dante Hightower, just to name a few. I think Brandon Bolden was another guy that opted out. Um, look, man, um, uh, Belichick is doing something, bro. I I don't, I don't know what it is, man. I, 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 and look, I have no facts to back this up, but Belichick is up to something, man. Um, he he might be tanking just to get Trevor Lawrence. I I, I don't know. You think he's making them know. sit down, or you think they're really sitting down because of their scare of COVID nineteen? Because there's a guy in Baltimore who sat down. There's a guy um, in Kansas City who sat da- who's sitting down. Um, right. I, I can't remember all the exact names. Um, I I can't even remember the guy in Baltimore. And, that, and, and, I, and the interesting thing about that maestro, I think most the the one thing that most of the players that are opting out have in common is that they're either on the offensive line or on the defensive line. Mm-hmm. I've, I've kind of noticed that. I thought there was know. a wide receiver in Baltimore. Who was the guy in Baltimore? I swear it was a wide receiver in Baltimore. 
Um, I didn't see that. I, I didn't see that okay, uh, come up me, on my phone. Let me but, see if um, I can find it. But, I mean, with the exception of Brandon Bolden, because Brandon Bolden is a running back for the Patriots. But it seemed like, for the most part, um, all these guys play on the offensive and defensive lines. So I'm wondering if there's something to that. Well, let me read down, let me read down the list. Uh, the list of players that have been announced via Bleacher mm-hmm. Report is Dante mm-hmm. Hightower, Brandon yep. Bolden, offensive mm-hmm. tackle Marcus Cannon, fullback mm-hmm. Danny Vi- uh, Vitale, Patriots, guard Najee Torrin, Redskins or football teams, defensive lineman Caleb Brantley, uh, Cowboys cornerback Maurice Kennedy, uh, mm-hmm. Seahawks guard Chance Warmack, Ravens uh, wide receiver kick returner DeAnthony Thomas, Chiefs okay. uh, mm-hmm. guard uh, Laurent Le- Duvernay, who was the first, Le- Laurent Duvernay Tardif, who was the first guy I had uh, read about. But, um, yeah, yeah, and uh, DeAnthony Thomas, who was a good kick returner for you guys last year, um, at least from my eyes, um, said he is sitting down amidst. Uh, okay, so him, Brandon Bolden, you said there was a safety. Patrick Chung's a safety. Patrick um, Chung, who then, wasn't on his list, but yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, actually, because I mean, based on just based on what I'm reading, one, two, shoot, one, two, three, four. Yeah, five out of maybe uh, out of maybe eleven players, maybe um, okay. are opting out. And and in the comments, it also reads uh, Bears defensive tackle Eddie Goldman mm. is also opting out. Twenty twenty. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so I wasn't far off from that. No, you weren't Mo- far off. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if there's any validity to the fact that the the players in the right. trenches are, um, are opting out. But what I will say is I take my hats off to each and every one of those players who decide my health is more important than this year's money. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, mm-hmm. It's just sometimes when I think of the Patriots, I, I always think in the back of my mind that they're always up to something. I don't know. It's just <laughs> it, it's just the fact that they cheat. You know, they, they do things, they get away with it, and I don't know, this, this might be one of those situations, but... Uh, for those players opting out um, for their protection and their health, I, I salute. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. so, too. It's, it's pretty funny to always speculate and think that Patriots are always up to something because pretty much I saw tweets on that, you know, people kind of speculating and talking about that because mm-hmm. for them, it's prominent players that are opting out. And, mm-hmm. I mean, it will have, right. we'll have right. some more prominent, you know, big-name players that will opt That's out as well. That's true. It's like they are part of the first ones, part part of the first wave, and you know Dante Hightower is their leader on that defense. Yeah, so along with Patrick Chung, them. and they've yeah. been in that locker room forever. So, mm-hmm. um, and Brandon Bolden as well. Like they're all veteran guys that you know play big key roles on that team, and it's just it just it's you just can't do anything but speculate and think like, oh, you know, Belichick has something to do with it. He wants Trevor Lawrence next year, and. You know, there will be some people out there that saying like, "Well, they got Cam," so it's like, no, like they're not really trying to tank. But you know, honestly, for one, that can be seen as a cover up, or in two, it's like still like Cam can't do everything for that team. So it's like it just it's just funny right. to that, that they are you know kind of doing something which we might not be wrong with that because most of the time, if you got a feeling about something like this, it's probably happening. Yeah. Um, hey, but, I, hey, Maestro, I could I could hear real cast ranges right now. Saying that uh, the Patriots are depleting the team, and Cam's got no weapons. Yeah, I I I can I can hear them right now. <laughs> well, they they wouldn't be lying because he don't really got no weapons. Uh, you don't. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> Jordan Rosario's comment is a excellent comment in response. The O line and D line are stuffed in the middle of the field like sardines. Wide receivers, cornerbacks, strong safeties, and free safeties have so much space. The space difference is definitely a factor as to why we're seeing more so the linemen opt out this season. Facts. Good point. Yeah. Facts. Good, good, good point. fucking point. Good fucking good point. Perfect sense, yeah. Because it's hard to even socially, like, like we were saying, we all just speculating, like, who knows what, it, like, football is going to look like this fall. So it's like, this is the most contact sport you can get, <laughs> like, out of all the sports that are coming back. So, it's hard to social distance in the first place. So it's like kind of like to that point, like you said, like 
they have a lot more, and they and they know what goes on between you know in the trenches on that line. Like, yes, you know, indeed. Probably spitting before the play, mm-hmm. like probably doing all types of crazy nasty stuff. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if more offensive and defensive linemen start to opt out. Trey, you got anything else, man? I just want to ask Jelani one last question before we get up on out of here, man. Yeah, of uh, so Jelani, um, mm-hmm. so you're a New York Mets fan. You mm-hmm. also are an Atlanta Hawks fan and an Atlanta Falcons fan. Oh, um, God, yeah. so sorry. Sorry, sorry about 28-3. Sorry about 28-3, by the way. It's all right, um, man. Every, every show I'm on, I hear it. Of, of, the, of those three teams, um, which one is closer to winning a chin, in your opinion? <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly. <laughs> Great question. Hard answer um um honestly it's it's hard i'll try to break all three of them down real quick with with the land that we see what we have on offense it's always the defense and it's even gonna be tougher this year because our secondary typically our safeties can never stay healthy and our corners are all young like the i mean we have one i guess ray wilson he's i guess our veteran but he's not a starter he's really like more of a special teams plug-in guy so from our starting cornerback group, we have a third year, and he's not that great. So it's like we're real young in the secondary. I don't know what the defense is going to be. We're real young at linebacker. So they're not really close, especially given how talented the NFC as a whole is um, in football. Well, honestly, a bunch of different teams that's pretty talented. So I don't really know. Um, they're pretty far away. We had our chance with, you know, Super Bowl mm-hmm. we could go to, and we kind of blew that. So um, <laughs> now I don't really ain't know. Ain't no kind of. Y'all blew oh, yeah. that. Fully, fully, yeah, they fully blew it, yeah. <laughs> fully blew it. My Mets, I don't know. Anything can happen with them, especially this type of year. This would be the type of year that we would win. Um, because, honestly, I don't know people who know, whoever watches baseball is listening, like, what, two years ago when we were in the Super World Series, and we blew every game after the seventh inning to the Royals. Like, we should have won four games in a row. And yeah, that was, was a, that was a pesky Royals team, man. That, that, was, that was a pesky team exactly. right there. Exactly. Like, it was just – that was literally theirs to win. But, at, like, literally every time the seventh inning, seventh inning hit, we just gave the game away and we lost. So, it was like that should have been our World Series too. Blew that one away. With the Hawks, we haven't seen a championship – as an organization since when? I don't even know. The 60s, 70s. But I do I do love what they're doing with their young core. Um, and a lot of people, especially in the league, a lot of people like John Collins, a lot of people like Trey Young. And we got Cam Reddish who was coming on before COVID stopped their season. So we definitely got a lot of great young pieces together. But we're definitely going to have to make that move. Hopefully it's a long-ass long, long ass shot. But bringing in Giannis 2021, or somebody, we gotta make some type oh, of trade. Shot. Here, here. Here's so, how you know. do it, man. Hey, Jelani, here's how you do it, man. You pitch them Magic City, man. <laughs> the Magic City Wings. This Magic City and Wings, the Magic strippers, yeah. And the strippers, man. <laughs> that's how you get them to come to Atlanta, man. The thing is, that's all, everyone in all, all sports, what you hear is athletes love coming here. They love. You know, vacationing, love the little spot. Like, like they love coming here when you know they play one of our teams. But they, like, they love living here, but they can't play here. Our fan base isn't as Trash. strong as a fan base yet. Because the thing is, Atlanta is a, I don't even know what to call it. It's like a, a plug-in city. Or like basically, no one's really. There's not that many. There is a lot of people from here, but not everybody's from here. Yeah, it's a so transcendent city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it's like we have people from New York. We got people from Louisiana. We got people from the Carolinas. Like we got people from everywhere. Yeah, they, of course, bring their fan base here as well. So it's like. I don't know. Like so in certain aspects, certain times it seems like we have a strong fan base, but in 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 retrospect, like not really. You don't. Like, yeah, honestly, the strongest not. fan base we got probably is the Braves. And nah, like, my team. Nah. So. I don't know. It's uh y'all ain't y'all ain't show up for that '95 team when they oh, won yeah. the chip. I don't y'all yeah, ain't show up for that team <laughs> because they were supposed to win. Like out of that one, I remember. Like I'm not really a Braves fan, but like if they're in the playoffs, I was watching. They were supposed to win like three, or, three or four in a row with that pitching staff that they had. So yeah, um, and I, I think they went to what two more, but lost those two. They so, went to three more. Yeah, yeah, three, yeah, but they lost them. So I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. It's like certain stuff like that happened, and the people in the city just kind of throw the team away. So to answer your question, I, I can't really answer it. I just gotta say none. I don't think we're really. <laughs> we're just. 
we're just trying to be competitive at this point. And well, I tell you what, y'all are the uh, the hotbed for building black businesses, and maybe y'all too busy building businesses over there. Yeah, like we. Well, one thing I guess we win at is the music scene. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Black Black Hollywood too, man. Black Tyler Hollywood, is, yeah. Make he making yeah. money down there, man. Exactly, yeah. He's doing it up. I guess they see Atlanta as a black mecca, you know, to to come and start different things. So, um, the one thing I do always hear is, or I even say it myself, if until we do right by Michael Vick, we ain't gonna win no championship for this. Mm, I like that uh, bar. Yeah, I like that, that bar. That's not right. Uh, hey man, on that on that note, man, I'm gonna ask you to plug your show one more time for the for the listeners, man. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Uh, again, first I want to say thank you guys, you know, Maestro and uh, Trey for having me on. It definitely was a joy. Love talking all these topics. Love talking sports in general. So I appreciate you guys for you know having me on and you know the hospitality and everything. Um, but yeah, to find me, um, of course, I'm again I'm Jelani Brown, the host of What the Game Means to Me podcast, a sports podcast with Jelani Brown. Um, I'm on all, you know, all platforms. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at WTG MTM podcast. It's pretty much the first letter of every word of my podcast. So WTG MTM podcast. Um, and then also I just made an Instagram maybe like a week or two ago. It's just what the game means to me. So follow me there. I'm starting to post stuff up and then also I have a Facebook page, what the game means to me, search that. Give me a follow and like as well. You know, I appreciate it because I'm pretty active on all of them. So, you know, just hit me up, listen in, you know, comments and feedbacks always welcomed. And, uh, and uh, yeah, like I said, appreciate it again for all the hospitality and the talk tonight, boys. Yes, sir. Jelani, yes, sir. man. Thank you so much, Jelani, for coming on with us, man. It was, it was a breath Anytime. of fresh air. We, we appreciate your company, man. It was dope to talk some sports with you. Yes, sir. And, um, man, you know, we hope to get up on the other side, man. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Definitely we'll have you on very, very, very soon. So. Yes, sir. Thank yes, sir. You. Hey, look, man, we uh, appreciate everybody uh, listening, everybody that's going to listen live, everybody that's going to listen on demand. Uh, real quick, make sure you follow us on Instagram at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. You can follow me at Trey, uh, at Maestro Styles, excuse me. You can follow Trey Frazier at Trey Frazier. On Twitter, you can follow me at Maestro Styles. You can follow Trey at Barbershop SPOR2. Make sure you like the Facebook page. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube page. Uh, for Trey Frazier, we good, homie? I'm good, man. Hey, for Close Tra- us out. Yes, sir. For Trey Frazier, this is Maestro Styles. We'll see y'all next week. Peace.